so people's behavior is generally affected by the environment external so external environmental factors for example in the ecological systems theory that Bronfenbrenner Uri spoke about uh, it helps us to appreciate that our internal state our internal balance can be affected or influenced by states outside of us so you can have the community in which you live can affect the way you view yourself the way you view other persons you can also look at for example the school you attend the school you go to or the school that you went to that can also affect how you view other individuals how you view yourself how you view your readiness to approach the world of work and then the family in which you came from or that the family that you are currently in or your relatives that could also affect your mindset affect your esteem of yourself your self-worth so externally there can be a number of things and also too we have social media that's external to an individual that could affect how they internalize themselves how they look at the world how they look at their abilities their accomplishments uh, how they look at for example how they present themselves to others so externally we agree can affect significantly uh, how we view ourselves of course we're not saying that the environmental factors outside the individual is the, is the only means whereby a person can be can be affected for example we know that internal for example a person may have a mental health disorder and that can affect how they view themselves it can thwart or bend their view of reality so that internal the internal states could be affected by uh, a mental disorder also there can be internalizing ideas or ideas based on other physical challenges a person may have so let's say for example a person may be diabetic and it can affect from time to time their energy levels so they make at time be a little more moody or a little more irritable in some situations not all situations of persons who have diabetes mean that they will present that way but sometimes it can happen a person who for example has uh, uh, anemic condition anemia that can affect their energy level so that could affect their moods it could affect the how much they're able to do or to accomplish and sometimes that can can affect their their, their, their mental states they may be comparing themselves to others and so forth and and that could really contribute to some unbalanced views uh, when it comes to their thinking today we want to talk about classroom management and uh, how creating an atmosphere in the classroom so we, we're talking about an external atmosphere in the classroom how a positive atmosphere can actually influence behaviors i'm alec delancey a psychologist and today we will be talking about classroom management and uh, how we can, especially as educators, help to motivate our students to learn as well as to assist them to regulate their behaviors based on the, the positive atmosphere that we create. So keep in mind that in the classroom, as an educator, you must create a feeling of caring you must have that caring persona project that feeling that you you really care about your students and it is not that you're just pretending that you care about your students because whatever subject you're teaching let's say for example you're a primary school teacher you no doubt um, you're teaching maybe several different subject matter and if you are a secondary school teacher well then you are teaching possibly in a specific area so it might be mathematics geography social studies history and you believe that your subject can influence 
decisions that the children, the, the students will make in the future. Your subject, if you are a secondary school teacher, for example, uh, or even if you are a university lecturer or professor, what you're teaching the students, you want it to have an impact on their career path, who they are, who they turn out to be, as the case may be. So you want to create that kind of atmosphere that says learning is important, learning is fun, because sometimes persons think that when you're in the classroom, you have to be uh, hard and harsh and, and, and serious. Of course, there is time for seriousness, but learning takes place when, and it takes place better, I'll say, when the environment that is created is an environment that is, 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 is fun, is gamified. So create that environment that you want to be there. You care about the students. You have their best interests at heart. Also, teach with enthusiasm. When you're in the classroom, of course, sometimes we have bad days. We come to the classroom and we're not feeling the best. Sometimes we may be a little tired. Maybe there's a lot of things going on in our personal life. Maybe domestically we have challenges with maybe our family members. Maybe a, a challenge with a husband, a challenge with a wife. Maybe challenge with children. Or maybe just the day-to-day -day living can be very challenging causing some some stress levels to rise the, maybe the bills to pay or sometimes even the subject that you're teaching you may start questioning whether or, whether or not you're qualified to teach the subject because at one time when you left school you were prepared but maybe some years have passed and you probably didn't keep up with the technology and now you're placed in a position where you, you're feeling that you're not prepared to teach the subject matter. Nonetheless, there are a number of books out there. There are YouTube, for example. You can Google stuff. You can do a lot of self-study that can help you to be prepared. So the subject that you're teaching, the subject matter, you might know it, but because of the advancement in technology or different ways of, of doing things, research probably has shown different answers to the ones that you probably knew you might feel some level of inadequacy but of course do your research um, and it's readily available long ago we had to leave and go to a library now of course if you have to go to a library you have to go to a library it's a good place to learn there's a lot of books and articles and so forth but there's a lot of things online a lot of videos as well as you can talk to other persons to kind of get a sense of whether or not your skill set your knowledge base is where it should be at so talk to maybe a mentor or someone that you you trust their judgment or you you look up to them because of being in that particular edu education field maybe they teach in the specific areas that you are teaching in or probably they have been teaching for a little while longer than you and uh, you you trust their judgment so you can talk with them so that when you teach you teach with a level of sincerity and enthusiasm and you're not holding back in any way so that too will create a classroom environment or atmosphere that is positive when you're excited about what you're teaching you're enthusiastic and you're sincere also too you want to project that on other students and you want to be conscious of actually projecting that level of excitement to learn onto other students because what can happen is that if we are thinking overly about what we see how we present ourselves and that is is causing us some level of of, of stress or causing us to hold back uh, sometimes what can actually motivate students to learn in this positive classroom environment is not necessarily what we may think uh, we may present ourselves to our classroom our students and the mere fact that we are energetic and we we we, we happy to be there and we seem to have a good grasp of our subject matter they can buy into that especially if we're using a lot of illustrations and stories and examples they are buying into that so they are willing to learn and in most instances once they're in your classroom you as a teacher 
you may actually know quite a bit more on the subject matter than the student especially if probably uh, like probably most students they may not have read up on the information before check the textbook or they may not have been following um following the curriculum to see exactly what they were supposed to be learning in this class or in your class so you are the expert of course you're not taking the approach that you know everything in the classroom and there's nothing that you can learn more even from your students but you want to project on the students that level of excitement and willingness to, to even learn you as the educator you have to help them to appreciate that even you too and you could even say to them you too are excited when you learn about a new material in this particular field or in this particular area so you want to create that or establish that, that positive classroom environment and a key way or key ways to do that you want to show that caring persona you want to demonstrate it you want to show sincerity and enthusiasm you you want to be involved in the subject that you're teaching it, it must be like you become an actor uh, you 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 become someone who dramatizes the subject they may the, the students must look at you and say wow miss is really into that so is really into to, to that subject that they're teaching and even though that student may not necessarily love that particular subject because of how you present yourself that student can buy into maybe I should try maybe I should really put my best foot forward and and and, and, and try to do a little better or, tr or try to do my best in this subject and uh, of course you want to transfer that positivity to them of course be mindful as teachers that negativity from students are not transferred transferred to you uh, because there are some situations where a student or maybe a couple of students or a few students may come to the class they don't want to be there they may be upset they feel that they are sentenced to, to your class or to the school as opposed to being sent or as opposed to coming to learn and because of that they may be very irritable very moody they don't see the need for your class because maybe the career path that they want to go into it may your subject matter may have little to nothing to do with, with with what they want to do in the future. So they're coming with that kind of mentality or possibly they may be going through some challenges in their own lives. Maybe they're going through family issues as well. I know that there are some children, uh, they may not be in the best household. Sometimes the household might be abusive, physically abusive, verbally abusive and otherwise. And they're coming into your classroom and they're coming with this level of, of stress as well and this level of trauma so what can happen is that when they come and they sit it's not necessarily you that they're upset with you know but they may sit there or they may come late or they may start talking during your class entertaining themselves doing something else and that could really get you upset as an educator as a teacher and uh, that could be transferred to you so now you start becoming irritable you be anxious you upset you frustrated you annoyed and you may even lash out at them you may probably scream at the students you may probably disrupt your class because there are some who are doing the work paying attention to you but you now become overly entangled with the other students who are not paying attention or probably um, showing some level of disrespect in your class and you are busy aggressively treating with that situation putting all your classroom management strategies and techniques to the side and now just becoming very combative and because of that you can now change the tone or the atmosphere in your classroom and the atmosphere now becomes one that is negative so you want to pay close attention to um, to the fact that you want to be able to be in control of yourself first and foremost um, but you also have others in the classroom that paying attention to how you treat with situations or how you manage your time or how you manage your class or how you manage your emotions and they are learning from that so you don't want to uh, demonstrate any kind of inappropriateness of behaviors that in the long run you will be actually 
and probably even inadvertently contributing to the negativity in your classroom or the disruption in your classroom. So pay close attention to that um, and do your very best to try to reach as much, if not all, your students in your classroom with your subject matter. And in so doing, you'll be creating or establishing a positive classroom atmosphere. So I hope that you found this content interesting, informative, and bringing some value to you. If so, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.